right, one last thing I want to talk about for chapter two of Triolo's book is something that I really talked about in chapter one as well, but I'll just mention it one more time here. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is partial pictures created by visual representations. So this is um, an example of a graph that I, I saw the other day, and this was to represent the um, defense sp spending during um, presidencies over the last, I don't know, let's call it um, 12 years. And what we have here is, um, let's just call this for the last three years of, um, or the last two years of the Clinton administration and then the years of the Bush administration and then the years, the first two years of the um, Obama administration. And defense spending may have not been what it was and it may have been different years, I don't know. It had something to do like that. So maybe we should say, you know, social welfare programs for the last um, three years of Clinton and then two years, uh, or yeah, I don't know. Anyway, whatever it is, you see that you see this huge dip here in the middle and you see it climbing. So what you would see if you were saying something like that is, oh, while it was, um, while it was in the um, Democrats' hands, it was really high, and then we took it lower through the Republicans' hands, and then it started climbing back up when we put it back in Democrats' hands again. And this could be very much used to sway your opinion about this. However, let's take a look again, as I saw with partial, or showed you with partial pictures before. If you extend these down, and you're instead looking at not just a partial picture, but the entire graph, which may be the zero point of this entire graph, goes way down here um, instead. And we say, okay, well, here's the, um, here's the bottom bar for this one here. And now we're looking at this overall picture. And we bring this one down here and we erase out this line across the middle so that we can, we're not having our eye drawn by that any longer. Um, and then we kind of color these in and we no longer see such the discrepancy possibly. Yeah, there's a discrepancy there, but the taller these bars get, the less obvious that curve is. There's a little dip here, but there's not as extreme of a dip and doesn't look as extreme as it was before. So remember, that's what I showed you in terms of partial pictures um, when we talked about that in chapter one. Now, a great example of this is on page 71 of your book. And another thing that I'd like to remind you about was what I said about pictographs. So here's a picture um, that where we have a cube representing 3K. And here's a cube representing double that, 6K. And if you look at these, does this cube over here on the right look like twice what this one it represents? No, it doesn't, right? There's a visual weight here that represents more than twice. But if I erase out this cube, right, and I'm just showing you the square here, and I erase out this cube, oops, I erase out the cube, not draw more in, I erase out the cube here, and we're just looking at the square, you see how that changes what you're seeing, right? This cube is three by three, and this one is six by six, so it's double, right? It's just double the size of what we had before. And so what we have is a very different picture. So the lesson that we learn from this is that we have to be careful of visual weight and what that means to our readers. So those were just a couple of the critical thinking skills that we learned from our um, section 2.5 and that I wanted to point out to you. So in this chapter, in conclusion, what we've learned about is we've learned about different visual ways to describe data. So we have um, in summary, talked about CivDot, and we have seen that although we're starting to get an idea of the C, the center, 
and of the V, the variation. Those haven't become quite clear to us yet. Distribution is starting to become quite clear. The outliers, oh, we have definitely seen outliers in these cases. Um, and time, as I said, we wouldn't talk about time very much, so that's not really here. So now we need to learn some better ways to deal with the center and the variation. And along with those, we're also going to learn a little bit more about outliers. So distribution we've learned very well. We've got a little bit of a visual on center and variation, but we don't have a good handle on those yet. Outliers we've definitely seen. So now we're going to go ahead and go into chapter three, where we're going to get a more mathematical approach to um, distribution and outliers and learn mathematical approaches to finding center and variation. And that will wrap up our discussions of descriptive statistics. So the next lecture will be in chapter three.